All right then gang, so now we have Dino set up on our computer, let's take a look at some of the basic things that we can do with it. So first of all, like with Node, we can also interact with the file system on our computer. So I'm going to show you in this video how to read files, write to files, as well as rename files and also remove them as well. So I've already created this readme.txt file right here, which we're going to try and read from sandbox.ts right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is access a Dino object, which comes along for the ride with Dino. And it has on this a load of different methods and properties that we can use. A lot of these are for reading or writing files or manipulating the file system. And the one to read something, read a file, is the read file method. Now we pass in an argument here, which is a string, and it's whatever file we want to read. So I want to read this readme.txt. So I'll say readme txt now this thing here is an asynchronous task and it takes some time to do so what i'm going to do is say await in front of this now we can use await in dino without putting it inside an asynchronous function so this is called top level await and dino allows us to do that which is really cool now this returns us what it reads from the file. So what I'm going to do is store that inside a variable. So let me say const and I'm going to call this data and set it equal to this. So it's going to go out and do this, wait for that to finish and then store whatever it reads inside this constant. Now I'm going to log this to the console. So console.log and we're going to pass in the data like so. Now, if I try to run this, there's going to be a couple of problems. So let's take a look at those. I'm going to say Dino run and then sandbox.ts. So first of all, if I try to run this and scroll up, we see there's an error and it says uncaught permission denied error. So it's saying right here, it doesn't have read access to this file and that we should use this allow read flag. So this was the permissions I was talking about and out of the box Dino is secure and we have to pass this flag whenever we're running a file like this to the command to say look we're going to allow this file to read from our computer and that's what this permission flag does right here allow read it allows this file to read other files on our computer. So let's try this again Dino run then i'm going to pass through the flag which is double dash allow hyphen read and then the name of the file i want to run which is sandbox.ts press enter again we're going to get this thing right here now so we no longer get that error because we've allowed this file to read from our computer however this right here doesn't mean much to us and in order to see the actual text of this file when we read it we have to decode this into a readable format using UTF-8 encoded. Now to do that, we create an instance of a text decoder inside Dino. So I'm going to do that up here by saying const decoder is equal to a new text decoder like so. And then as an argument, we say we want to use UTF-8 to decode this. So make sure you spell this correctly decoder like so. So now we can use this text decoder to decode whatever we get back, which is stored inside data and then output that instead. So let me delete this where we output data and instead take our decoder, which is right here. So decoder and then on this use a method called decode and pass in the data that we want to decode. That is going to return to us whatever is in this file inside a readable format. So if I save this now and run again down here, press enter, and now we can see the text content. Okay, so that is how we read files. So let me just place a little comment at the top to say reading files. And then under that, we'll do a writing files like so. And down here, instead of reading from the file, we're going to try and write this file. So this time, let me say await and then Dino dot write file this is how we write to a file and i want to write to readme.txt and then we also pass in a second argument which is the text that we want to write to the file so i'm going to store that in a constant up here let me say oops const text is equal to hello again ninjas Okay, so this is what I want to write to the file. So I'm going to pass in as a second argument, this text constant. So 
Now you'll notice we get this error right here and it's saying it's not assignable to a parameter of type unit eight array. So what it's saying is we have to convert this for it to write it to the file. So to do that, we do the opposite of this thing right here. And instead of creating a decoder, we create an encoder. So let's do that first of all. I'm gonna say const encoder is equal to new text encoder, like so. And below that, we need to encode this stuff right here. So I'm gonna take the encoder right here and paste it and use a method called encode and pass in this string. So now we've encoded this and now we're passing that into this write file method. And now this should work. So if I save it and run this again, first of all, we're gonna read it. And secondly, we get this error, permission denied again. And this time it's saying it doesn't have write access. And if we want write access, we have to pass in this allow write permission flag. So let's run this command again, but this time as well as allow read, I'm gonna say allow hyphen write as well. And now we're allowing this file to read and write to and from our file system. So if we press enter now, this should work. First of all, we read it and output that here. Then this should be written to the file, which it is. Awesome. Okay then, so let me just show you a couple more things now. So another comment down here, renaming and removing files. And under that, I'm gonna use another method. Again, I'll use await because it's asynchronous. Then dino dot rename. This is used to rename one file into another. Now we want to rename readme.txt into a second argument, deleteme.txt. And the reason I'm calling it this is because I'm gonna show you how to delete this in a second. Okay, so if I save that and run it again, then we should see down here, delete me, awesome. Now I'm gonna actually rename that back to readme for a second so that when we run this file again, we don't get errors up here. And next down here, I'm gonna try and remove this file after we've renamed it. So I'm gonna say await and then dino.remove and then I'm gonna say delete me.txt. So save that and run this again. And this time we see it's removed right at the end. Awesome. Now I wanna show you one more thing. So at the top up here, you see how we're creating this text decoder when we're reading a file and then we have to decode the data we get back from that file. If we're reading from a text file, then we can do something that's a bit easier than all of this. So let me just comment all of this out for now, first of all, and show you a different method. So I'm gonna say const data is this time equal to await dino and then use a method called read text file. And this time it automatically does this stuff for us. So now I'm gonna say I want to read readme.txt and then I can log this to the console without doing all of this text decoder stuff by saying console.log and it's the data we wanna log. Now I have to recreate this readme.txt file for this to work and inside there we'll say hello ninjas like so, save it and I'm going to comment out the rest of this stuff down here so that doesn't interfere with it. Um, we're gonna save this and run the file once again. And you're gonna notice that we get an error right here and it says the system cannot find the file specified. Okay, that's because I've said text here. It should be txt instead. Save that and run this again. And now we can see it reads this and we didn't have to use this text decoder. So then, like I said before, Dino adopts web compatible APIs where possible, which means that we can access APIs like fetch, location, and the window object all directly in Dino without any kind of third party packages. And that's awesome because it means that now our code can be shared much more easily between Dino on the back end and in a browser on the front end. So let's try using the fetch API through Dino in this file. So I'm gonna be grabbing data from a Star Wars API, which is over here, woohoo. So I'll leave the link to this down below in case you wanna check it out. And to do that, I'm gonna say, first of all, const res, that stands for response or result. And we're gonna store whatever we get back from the fetch request inside this constant. So I'll set that equal to await because the fetch request is an asynchronous task. 
So fetch, and then we need to pass in an endpoint where we want to grab the data from, which is this link right here. So we're going to grab a list of films, and that's going to come back to us in a JSON string format. So we can use the JSON method on this response right here when we use fetch to turn that JSON string into an object that we can work with in our TypeScript file. So I'll say const, and then the data is going to be equal to await response.json. And the reason I use await is because this method is also asynchronous and it returns a promise. So then we're awaiting it before we take that result and store it in the data. Okay, so now let's just say console.log and we're going to log the data to the console, save it and open up the console. Let's run this file by saying dino run and then sandbox Ts. We are going to get an error, and that's a permission error because we can't automatically access the network. So again, we have to pass a permission flag to this to give the file access to the network in order to make this request. And the permission flag is this thing right here, allow net. So again, let's say dino run hyphen hyphen allow hyphen net, then the file name sandbox.ts and run it. And now we should get a response, which is all of these different films are right here. Awesome, right? Cool. So that's how we can easily use the fetch API inside Dino with no third party package needed. Now, in this video, I've been talking about permission flags a fair amount, but there are more permission flags than I've shown you. So you should definitely check out the Dino website on this page. And I'll leave this link down below so you can go and check it out. And you can see all of the different permissions right here. So you can say allow all to allow all permissions instead of allowing two or three of them at once. That's easier to do, but it does then enable permissions to do everything. So the ones we've used are allow net, allow read and allow write, but there are others as well. So I'll leave the link to this, like I say, down below in case you want to check these out as well. So next up, we're going to look at the standard library and how to create a server in Dino.